Hello, my name is Brad Brummel, and I will be your host today for the session PD and PE at the Phys Ed Summit. I'm super excited to be here with you today. I'm very thankful that the Phys Ed Summit has given me the opportunity um, to share with you. And um, a little bit more about me, I'm from Springfield, Missouri. Um, I'm the Health and PE Coordinator for Springfield Public Schools. And we are located in the Southwest region of Missouri. Um, our school district is the largest in Missouri. We have 35 elementary schools, 10 middle schools, and five high schools. We average about 25,000 students. And uh, just super excited to share with you a program that we implemented this year at three of our middle schools called PD and PE, a collaboration between our local Springfield Police Department and our seventh grade physical education classes. And so I'm excited to get going. Um, if you'd like to connect with us during this session, um, please follow us on Twitter. Um, you can use the hashtag PhysEdSummit or PDMPE, and we'd love to connect with you on Twitter as well. So looking forward to um, collaborating with you and sharing some of the strategies that we use to implement this. Um, I hope that when you leave the session today that you will know why we implemented it, um, some of the strategies that we used, and if you're interested, how to recreate this at your own school in your own community. So before we get started, I wanna introduce you to the rest of my team because without these people, this program would not have been a success. And so I'm going to introduce you to the rest of my team. Sure, my name is Jasmine Bailey and I'm the Public Affairs Officer at the Springfield, Missouri Police Department. Officer Brandon Keene, the Resource Management Officer for the Springfield Police Department. Um, I am Kendall Plank, and I teach middle school PE, 6th through 8th grade. Now that you've met my team, we're going to get started. Today, I plan to use the whole part whole method in sharing the program with you. So we're going to look at the big picture, the program as a whole, then we'll break it down visit by visit and share individual strategies that were used. And then we'll finish with looking at the feedback and the takeaways of the program as a whole. So we're going to get started introducing you to the program with a local news story that was um, put out by Color 10, and it does a great job of um, introducing you to the program, giving you a little insight, and I think that you'll enjoy this story. Sometimes police officers can seem intimidating, perhaps, to kids, but today officers traded their uniforms for gym shorts in Springfield to show kids that there's nothing to be scared of at all. Color 10's Nigel McDonald is here tonight with more on this new program that's making this happen between the officers and the kids. Nigel. Well, David, it's not every day that a middle school student gets the opportunity to have a push-up contest with a police officer, but through SPD and PD, officers are working to build lasting relationships with students through play. If you walk the halls of Cherokee Middle School today, you might have noticed something different. Springfield police officers trading in their normal uniforms for gym gear. It's fun to see them because like usually when you see a police officer, you think, oh man, like am I doing something wrong? During PE, Goddard and his classmates played games like Batman with some of our local law enforcement. We played a rock, paper, scissors game and I went up against a lot of police officers and it was fun because like, I got to win a couple times and I thought that was cool. Known as SPD and PE, this new program works to show students that police officers are people just like them. It's fun because you can like, you see them like on the streets and stuff like doing their job, but then they're like still like normal humans that are just like everybody else, just they have a bigger role, I guess. Smiles and high fives could also be seen during today's session. The department says the goal of SPD and PE is to support healthy relationships between police officers and our youth. They can like experience like what it's like to be a kid and like to build the relationships with them because they're like nice people. Some people get that confused. The idea is that then they take this, these interactions and the stories that they have from SPD and PE, the kids, bring it home to their parents. And as they grow up, they remember these positive interactions that they've had with law enforcement and hopefully the long-term effect would be beneficial. Well, Bailey says during the school year's final session of SPD and PE, students will get an opportunity to tour a squad car and see a uniform, an officer in uniform. All right. I love getting to hear from the students. Um, I think that their perspective is um, 
very important to this story and this program. And I think that many times I have the same reaction or feelings when a police officer um, comes into a building or a facility or an environment that you're in. Uh, your first reaction is, is there something wrong? Um, am I doing anything wrong? You, you, it's typically not just a, um, you don't notice. Um, and so I can relate to a lot of their answers. Um, and I think that that's one of the reasons why I wanted to get involved. And I've always been taught to give credit where credit is due. And Jasmine Bailey came up with the idea and she approached our school district, um, wanted to meet with someone about the potential of creating some type of program to um, interact with police officers and students. And so uh, we we put together a strategic, strategic planning team. Um, I was on board. I, I was um, all in. I, I wanted to see what we could do with this. And I thought PE was a great um, opportunity for this program. And we talked about how a lot of times you'll see a viral video or a, a video online of um, an interaction between a police officer and uh, youth maybe shooting baskets or doing something outside. And it's always such a positive experience and it's, it's always a warm story. And so we kind of wanted to recreate that, but be more intentional and provide something that was ongoing that would really provide students an opportunity to build a lasting relationship. And so um, when we got together as a strategic team to plan for this program, it really just took off from there. Jasmine, can you tell us uh, why you came up with this idea or what made this idea of yours come to life? Um, for me, I was looking for a way for our department to show our community that we love them. Um, SPD and PE for me is a love letter to our community, a way for us to build relationships and take down those walls that sometimes are built between law enforcement and the citizens that they serve. And so I really wanted to use this as a platform to humanize our officers and build those relationships. Brandon, why, why was this program PD and PE important to get started for you? This is a great opportunity for recruiters to build that relationship and allow you know kids to know what opportunities are like later on and that the police officers that they may become are just like they are their parents are they're just human beings that chose this profession um, and you know with long-term understanding of that spend the next five six seven years researching their field uh, they will know that you know we have a certain rule set of course but at the end of the day we're, we're just like them yeah to hear from my team relationships was by far our top priority. And so when planning and um, sharing this program with our community, we had to keep this in mind because we did not want students to consistently see us um, trying to get pictures with the officers and pushing a bunch of stuff out on Twitter and Facebook and inviting the media in um, on several visits. And so we felt like if we if we weren't careful, students were going to see this as a staged program or a fake program um, for positive press and not for what we wanted at, as, which was genuine relationships and, and opportunities to um, learn. And so we we tried to do this by limiting the media exposure. And we and we so what we did was we invited all the media outlets to one school and at one visit. We did that for visit number two. And we did that at one middle school. So that way we didn't have one news station going to this school and one going to the other, the newspaper coming on visit one and somebody coming on visit three. And so we, we picked one school and one visit and we had invited everyone to come then to share with our community because we feel like that's important, but we wanted to balance the genuine approach to forming relationships. And so I think that the kids appreciated that. And I think that I think that, that that meant a lot to our officers as well. And one thing I appreciated is that I never saw officers with their phones out. They were always engaged with our students. And I think that the second part for me is that I wanted this to be an educational opportunity as well. And looking at our shape standard three and learning the the concepts and demonstrating the skills to live a health enhancing life um, 
we wanted those students to be able to make a connection with the choices that they're making now, um, the choices that they'll make in the future have a, have a big impact on their future life and their future career. And so we wanted to use this a police academy and the police officers to help us demonstrate that and to help the students make a real life connection to Shape Standard 3. Now let's talk organization. We started by identifying the three middle schools that we wanted to participate. I then would communicate with the lead PE teacher and the building principal. Once we had approval from the building principal, I would put the lead PE teacher in touch with the police department. So that way they could schedule the four visits. The police department scheduled the police officers and what would take place at a visit would be a small group of police officers, four to six, that would visit a middle school and they would participate in all of the seventh grade physical education classes. And again, they would visit for the, for the entirety of the program, they would visit four times. Sometimes this would take place in a semester. Um, if we have a middle school that operates on an A-B schedule and they go all year, then those four visits could spread out a little longer if they wanted to, but we tried to get them done in a semester. The officers that would come visit were in workout apparel with the uh, PD and PE t-shirt that the police department made. And the PE teacher uses our program plan to kind of know what happens at each visit. And we're gonna go into detail in that in just a second. But first, let's hear from some other team members on organizational actions that they took. Can you tell me what went into the decision of the officers coming dressed out for PE and not in their, their uniform? I thought it was important to me to go into these, you know, environments, wear the same clothes as the kids. Um, you know, we go to lunch with them, we eat the same food as the kids. Um, show them that we are just like them. We went through the same process they did when we were in elementary school. Um, and then obviously, you know, we wear gym clothes and work out too. You know, we're not always sitting in a vest and with 50 pounds of gear on uh, doing our job and arresting bad guys. And I think that was super important to not walk in and establish that, that physical presence. Uh, we would call it law enforcement, we call it a command presence. It's actually uh, one of our first levels of force in the sense that, you know, people don't fight us because we're the police. And that, that command presence can be a little bit overbearing, and it's certainly overbearing to a child. Um, and so for me, it was very important to keep those things separated, come in, basic clothes, wear a t-shirt with our name on it, and, and just have a good time. Yeah, and I loved that when I when I was there on visits, I I never noticed an officer um, trying to step in to help with discipline or classroom management. Um, they were simpler there as another middle school student, there for a workout, there to have fun, um, there to get to know the kids better. And so that was that was by far my favorite part. Um, yeah. I thought that was awesome. Our biggest, our biggest thing was not to interfere with, you know, your guys' operations. We didn't want to change your program. I uh, didn't want to interfere with your learning objectives. But also, um, it's really not our job. To, we don't know enough about those kids to change their behavior. And you have to understand, you know, as a law enforcement officer, when I interact with people on the street, I'm typically a Band-Aid. I'm not a permanent solution. And that's transferable into your classroom. If, if people were to be taking those steps to try to correct behavior in your classroom, it's a Band-Aid response that may actually make the situation worse. And so it's, in, in our view, it's actually very important to us to stay out of that, let the teacher handle it, not try to take that power away from them. Uh, Visit number one. So I am at Cherokee Middle School for their visit number one. I am in the gym with a group of officers and I'm watching the group of seventh grade PE students enter the gym. This is the first class and it was awkward. It was quiet. It was the quietest group of seventh grade PE students or middle school group of PE students I've ever witnessed. And they come in, they don't say a word, they're not talking to each other. They just come in and sit on their squad spots. And it wasn't because their teacher told them to be quiet. It was because th they were just being awkward. They were nervous. Um, there was a barrier, a wall between that group of students and the group of officers. And as I'm, as I'm there and I'm observing this, I'm 
thinking in the back of my head, is this going to work? Like, is I'm not sure that this is going to, that this is, that this is really going to take off. And, and, but then I, I realized that this is why we're doing it because there is this wall there, there is this barrier there. And so we kind of got started and the day they went with their normal routine, their normal warm up. Um, officers just jumped right in and started participating and exercising with them. And when I asked them to, they just kind of went out in general space and uh, just started doing the warm ups with the kids. When the warm ups were done, we did some short intros and let the officers introduce themselves, um, just their name and and what they do. And then we got into a um, rock, paper, scissors activity called Pyramid Rock, Paper, Scissors. And we intentionally chose this activity because we wanted to put the students in little mini one-on-one -on -one interactions with the officers to hopefully start breaking down that barrier, that wall. And as the activity went on, the gym got louder and louder and louder. And that was a that was a that was a good sign. That was a sigh of relief because it it started so quiet. Um, pyramid rock paper scissors is where you start with a base level of hula hoops. Um, you could use cones as well, but we chose to use hula hoops. Six to eight hula hoops on that base level. And then as you battle someone, rock, paper, scissors, and if you win, you move up to the next row or level of hula hoops. And you find someone to battle at a hula hoop. And again, if you battle and you win, you keep moving up, hopefully all the way until you get to the last hula hoop. If you battle and win there, the students went up and wrote their name on the whiteboard so they could keep track of how many wins they got. If you ever lose, then you go back to the very base level. You go down to the baseline. You would do the identified exercise at that time, and then you would go battle someone. Um, the teacher got to choose what exercises the students were doing, and they would change those exercises every three to five minutes. And so you can... Uh, differentiate it per, for what that class needs or what test is coming up or what component of fitness that specific group of students needs to work on. Um, and then towards the end, you can let the students choose. And so it was a great way to get their heart rate up, able to improve specific components of fitness, but more importantly, get into these one-on-one um, -on -one interactions with the officers to start breaking down those barriers. So at this time, I would like for you to provide your favorite rock, paper, scissors activity in the comment section. You can provide the name and description. You could provide a link to maybe a, a resource that would show others how this activity goes, or you could provide a video. Um, just something easy that you could provide in the comment section to share with others your favorite RPS activity. Thanks for sharing. Thank you for sharing some of your favorite rock, paper, scissors activities. Hopefully you were able to um, 
learn and steal a couple new ones for implementing in your classes. One of my favorite rock, paper, scissors activities is called RPS Ask and Share. And so this is a fun way to review content and or just use it as a team builder, class builder um, for students to learn more about each other. And so what you would do is you would use your projector and, and display these up on the screen. And it's a simple stand up, hand up, pair up, battle with someone. If I beat my partner with a rock, then I get to ask a question from the rock box. And then my partner that I beat would share their answer to that question. So it's very simple. Um, students get to learn more about each other. Teachers are in control of the prompts. Um, I love using this. For visit number two, we're following our normal class routine, uh, whatever unit or activities that the teacher and would have planned for that day, we're just continuing that regular activity. Officers are there to join in and participate in whatever is already scheduled. Uh, we want this to be just an extension of what you're already doing in class. And so what we really see in visit two is the officers building sweat equity with the students. And so they're, as they're exercising and participating with the students, they see the, the officers sweating with them, putting in work and time with them. And that really goes a long way with the students. Um, you're gonna see in visit two here at Jarrett, they're participating in a circuit of fitness stations. And so those officers are really putting in work, encouraging the students. Um, and really just exercising right along with them. Um, at Cherokee for visit number two, they were in a badminton unit that week. And so you can see the officers participating with the students. Um, they were doing a must do, may do badminton skill challenge that day. And so officers were just kind of um, floating around, helping students with their challenges, completing them with them, just having a great time. And so again, we see visit two, top priority is relationships. For visit three, we start to notice students warming up to the officers. They're entering the gym, calling officers by name, um, saying hello in the hallways. They're coming in and, and not so quiet anymore. That awkward silence is, is gone, which is a great sign. And we do have an intentional activity planned for visit three. Uh, this is where we're starting to make that connection for our students to shape standard three. Um, we're starting to help them make that real life connection of their choices and their, uh, their, their, their fitness levels, how that can impact their future, how that can impact a potential career, how that can impact the, their quality of life in the future. And so we're, we're going to use a QR code activity for that for visit number three. Um, but first, we wanted I want to share with you a this or that instant activity or warm up that we used um, for visit three and instant activities. We, we use these this or that Google Slides for lots of different warm ups and instant activities in the district. And it's just a great way to use the technology that we have um, to help students stay organized, engage them. You can change the the exercise or dance gifts that students are doing. And so we wanted to make a PD and PE version of this or that. And so I worked with Jasmine Bailey to come up with some local police officer gifts. And it also is a great way for the officers and students to get to know each other a little bit more. And so for the first prompt, officers can find out if there's any students that have family that work for SPD. Um, and so it's a great way for them to get to know each other a little bit more and some simple exercise gifts to kind of get their heart rate up. Um, the other prompts are maybe more icebreaker or team builder. And so, you know, these are two local officers um, demonstrating some some easy exercise gifts here. And students are always surprised to see um, police officers like video games as well. Um, everyone loves bonding over pets or dogs, and so some fun um, exercise gifts with some pets and even a police canine doing some push-ups, so that's fun. Um, with the next prompt, we have two local ice cream shops, so everyone 
we like bonding over ice cream in Springfield and a couple of local police officers uh, getting after it here. And then we we know that within our PE classes, we, we can bond over certain sports and how we can stay active. And then the, we probably got the most laughs for the day was the Fortnite slide. And uh, students loved to see what officers currently are playing Fortnite. And uh, this prompt um, really causes you to think what I would eat for the rest of my life. And then um, the team challenge was fun, seeing groups, groups of students and officers get together to perform this, these team dance challenges. And, and these are our local officers that sent these gifts in. And so just a fun way to get warmed up, fun way to get the heart rate going. And uh, we really enjoyed using the PD and PE, this or that, that uh, I will share this Google slide with you. And maybe you can um, encourage your local um, police department to send you some gifts as well. So after our this or that activity, students are organized into small groups and are traveling around the gym with something to scan a QR code with. The police officers are doing the same thing. They're kind of floating around and jumping in with different groups. But once they've scanned a QR code, they're reading the prompt that is um, providing a responsibility from a police officer and why that would be important to their current level of fitness. And then following that would be an exercise that would help them achieve that level of fitness. So the example of that is, a motorcycle officer needs a strong core to hold up their motorcycle, which weighs over 800 pounds. The exercise would then be do 10 V-ups. So it's describing a responsibility, why it's important to their fitness, and then the exercise that would help them achieve that. So it's really helping our students understand the connection between their health enhancing behaviors and their future career or their future life. And so really helping make that connection. We like to end the day with a Q&A opportunity for students. So as they're stretching or cooling off, the students can ask the officers questions about maybe one of the prompts that they read, or maybe a question that they've always wondered about um, a police officer that maybe does not relate to one of the prompts. But we really enjoyed visit three because it really led to great discussion between students and officers. Let's get into visit number four. This was uh, the student favorite day, and uh, we had police academy stations prearranged, uh, set up, so that way students could rotate from station to station, um, getting to engage and learn more about what might happen in a police academy training. Uh, we start the day with watching a video of the training obstacle that a police officer has to complete under a certain time for them to make it through and graduate police academy. And so a couple of these activities kind of resemble and relate to those. So that really uh, was a great anticipatory set and hooked the students in um, for today's learning. And uh, some of the stations you can see are a fun dummy pool, uh, a tire flip, if you're if you're able to be outside, some schools were able to go outside and use a big tire and, and do a tire flip competition. If we were inside, we used a weighted, um, a weighted kind of a weighted dummy that the students were able to flip um, to, to resemble that same activity. And uh, most local police departments are going to have some of those um, same resources that, that you could borrow or use. And they always brought along with them. Some of the things that we set up to go along with that was um, a tic-tac-toe relay race that the officers had fun racing. And then we had a ba uh, one station just of, of shooting baskets, playing knockout with the officers just to, again, help build those relationships. You can change out some of those activities to fit the unit that you're in or to fit your facilities and your equipment. Um, the key is just having a couple stations where the kids can make those connections to um, the police academy or responsibilities or what goes into training to be a police officer. And so that's what we tried to do. Um, now that we have this set up and planned, um, another middle school can take this and implement this program next year and copy these stations and adapt them to fit their needs. And then um, for sure, the favorite was getting to sit behind the wheel of a police patrol car 
Um, they let them push all the buttons, turn on the sirens, use the, uh, use the mic and, and yell at the principal that was outside. And so that was a lot of fun. And, um, we're going to watch a couple of videos from visit number four. Here's the dummy pool. Dummy weighed 180 pounds. And so you really had to lift it up off the ground to have good speed. And the officer was timing him to see who could drag the dummy the quickest. And then here was the tire flip station. So they worked together to see how quick they could flip it back and forth. We had two of them, so they were able to kind of have a relay race set up. Um, students were working hard, having fun, and seeing a similar, um, similar training that a police officer would go through during their academy. Uh, Kendall, what was your favorite part about the PD and PE program? My favorite part about the PD and PE uh, program was the relationship I saw my students build with those officers. I would see them in the hallways giving them high fives. Uh, they would always ask, when are they coming back? How many more visits? Um, so it was really cool for them to build a relationship with somebody outside of the school system that also values physical education. Mm, my favorite part. I mean, there's so many stories just from working with the kids, but their willingness to open up and to um, tell us about their lives and for them to ask questions and um, just kind of see how their face lights up whenever we walk into the room. Um, that really has been my favorite part through all of this building those relationships. But, you know, my biggest part is we, we were invested in a couple schools, um, but one school that was really important to me is in a, it's a impoverished area of the town. Um, there are a lot of kids that uh, in, are in that school that are, I would call at risk in the sense that they have some behavioral traits that could lend to criminal behavior later on. Um, and so for me, I was that kid. I grew up uh, at 12 years old. I was on juvenile probation. Um, I didn't have parents in my life. And as a matter of fact, police officers were in my life um, voluntarily or not, and they kind of made an impact. So for me, being in a school like that was very important to me. Um, so I could make that impact, even if it was just for a couple kids to let them know that someone's here for them. Uh, you know, they're not the only ones that have ever made mistakes. I don't get into my work history or, or my life history with them. Uh, that's not beneficial to building their behavior. But um, I do, you know, talk about, you know, the behavior that they've exhibited before isn't necessarily indicative of how they're going to be in the future and that they have to take these, you know, these steps. And so my favorite part of it is being able to do what somebody did for me. Um, and be a part of a kid's life that may or may not be on the right path right now and just trying to, you know, put them towards the, the right decision making process. So we finished up all four visits. Um, we uh, just like anybody else implementing a new program, we try to take a step back again, look at the big picture, try to get some feedback, try to evaluate um, the impact and how we're going to move forward with this um, program in the future. And it was to measure the, the impact of the program and, and really, honestly, to get feedback from the students. I mean, that was the fifth question. And so we we got 223 responses from the students, which is pretty good for a Google form. And these were the questions we asked. We asked them what their overall opinion was. And you can see that, um, you know, close to 80 percent of them either extremely liked or somewhat liked the program. We asked um, what kind of impact. The program had on their opinion of police officers, which, if you remember, was one of our which was one of our whys to start. And you can see that um, a very large percentage had a has a positive effect of how they feel about a police officer. Question three: um, We were interested in what were their thoughts about maybe joining the police academy in the future, and I was surprised to see that. Um, we had a decent amount, 12% of students extremely more likely to consider a career in law enforcement now after the program, and 31% slightly more likely to consider a career in law enforcement. So this data point was very intriguing to Officer Keen, the recruitment officer, and data that he can use um, back with his team to validate using police officer time to um, invest in our in our students and time in our schools. And so this was a, a, a great data point to share with the police department. And then we kind of wanted to know the impact if students were sharing about the program outside of their PE class. And about half of them had, had told someone <clears throat> about the program. 
And so then the last question, the fifth question was open-ended, constructive um, comments. And, and this is what they told us on how they felt about the program or suggestions. see some comments through how they liked how we related it to their career they definitely liked pulling the 180 pound dummy at the fourth visit and then i loved reading um the the student mentioning that they were scared of police but they didn't know why it was just it's really a part of society and i can i can personally attest to that as well and i really thought it was need that that student felt the need to type that into a Google form. Um, and so I think that that's great feedback that, that we can share. Kendall, what were your big takeaways from the program as a whole? Um, I think my biggest takeaway is that students were able to see how fitness is a lifelong um, aspect. And so the students were able to make a connection between what they're learning now and how that could be applied to future careers or just future health in general. First, And then it also kind of made me a little less calloused in the sense that as a police officer, you, you see a lot of negativity. Um, and so a lot of the interactions you have with the public aren't the public that are super supportive of police officers. And so for me, it was nice to see that there's a whole generation behind us that really doesn't have that established mindset yet. And the only way we can help keep that as a positive mindset is to interact with them. So, you know, we would have kids that weren't even in PE that saw us in the hallways in our t-shirts, SPD and PE t-shirts and would wave and, you know, Hey SPD. And, and we'd keep walking to the gym. So that was pretty cool. That is cool. Um, I think, you know, like whenever you look at the first visit and it's kind of awkward and the kids don't really, they're afraid to talk to the officers and then you fast forward to the fourth visit, it's just a complete 180. And bringing an, a uniformed officer who was never in the PE classes and a patrol car that the kid can kind of get inside and you really just take down that wall and they can ask any questions. Whereas if you see an officer on the street, you're afraid to approach them. And so my hope is that those experiences for the kids are ones that they can carry through their life. And so any interaction that they have with law enforcement going forward, they are more aware of kind of the behind the scenes aspect of the uniform. And so that will translate into more positive interactions is the hope, so. Yeah. So Jasmine, as the public affairs representative of the police department, what kind of feedback did you get from the community? It's been overwhelmingly positive. I think the community has um, really embraced this program and I appreciate um, how much uh, school, the school district has embraced it. Uh, once the idea was presented to you, to you guys, you just kind of ran off with it, and that's meant a lot to us. Um, but yeah, it's been definitely overwhelmingly positive, um, and I think that any time that that law enforcement is taking that extra effort to go out into the community and to build those relationships, that's a good thing. Well, I hope that you've enjoyed learning more about PD and PE. Um, you've seen the big picture of why we got started. You've seen each visit. Um, you've kind of seen what it takes to run a program. Um, again, uh, if you were to try this at your school or your community, um, you can change this to fit your site's needs or your community needs. Uh, we just wanted to provide a little bit of um, advice for getting started if you're interested. Um, if it were me and I was wanting to get this started in my community, I would start off by um, contacting the local police department and specifically the public affairs officer is who you would want to try to contact and be prepared um, prior to that email or phone call to communicate your why. Um, that's super important. Uh, you don't want to don't want to try to pitch a program or pitch an idea without knowing your why. It's, it's so important to understand that. And then as you're doing your communication and your planning, you want to be consistent with that why. And uh, don't forget to obviously communicate um, with your principal or building leader. Uh, you definitely want them on board. And then 
please feel free to use any resources that you've gathered from today's session to help pitch your idea. Feel free to use um, the Google slide or any of the videos um, to help communicate what this could look like at your school or community. And now I'm going to kick it off to the fabulous Jasmine Bailey for a little advice from the police department side. Um, well, I would say if anyone is wanting to maybe implement this program, you got to start small. And as we've started with the first semester and we've been wanting to expand, a real challenge has been uh, finding the resources to do that, finding the number of officers who are, who are going to be able to dedicate their time to go into the schools and then deciding what schools we're going to be in. And in an ideal world, we'd be in every seventh grade class in the entire city, but we just really don't have the resources or, or the, the, the staffing to do that. And so that's been kind of the, the biggest challenge. Kendall, what communication efforts did you take prior to the four visits? Um, I talked with my principal. We made sure that everything was good to go there um, and let the office staff know that there would be quite a few police officers joining us in the building. Um, I also sent out a building-wide email um, to teachers so when they saw police officers walking down the hall that they knew um, they were coming to visit our class and to join us and I encouraged those teachers you know to to engage with them in the hallway as well and spread the word with um, other students. I did prep my students telling them we were gonna have some visitors, um, but just to continue class as normal and they were just gonna join in and do whatever we were doing. I hope that if you had any questions that you were able to provide those and get those answered. Um, if you have any remaining questions or follow-up questions that um, are unanswered from our session, please use the contact information provided to reach out to me or Jasmine to um, ask questions, um, reach out for support, whatever it is that we can do to help you um, get a program like this started in at your school or community, we would, we're all in. We want to help other communities jump on board and see the student and community benefit from, from PD and PE. And so again, uh, stay connected with us. Um, we know that there's going to be some schools and communities that take this program and just knock it out of the park and are super successful. We want to stay connected. We want to learn from you as well because this is a new program. You are going to find ways to um, make this even better. And we want to um, learn from you just like you hopefully learned from this session today. So please follow along with our SPSPE uh, on Twitter. And uh, please, if you um, have anything to share today, use the hashtag PDNPE. And uh, if you uh, get this program up and running, we would love to hear about it. So again, stay connected, um, share what you're doing. And uh, thank you again for um, being a part of today's learning. And I'm super excited for to see maybe some of the this learning taken back to schools and communities across the United States and across the world, and hopefully um, see this benefit students and communities. Uh, again, can't thank you enough. Uh, it's been a great day of learning and uh, keep on uh, being you. And uh, it says a lot about you that you took your Saturday to be here to learn. And so I know that your schools and your communities are so lucky to have you. And uh, it's just, it's a very inspiring um, that there are educators out there in the health and physical education world uh, uplifting their schools and communities. And so thank you and have a fantastic weekend.